So in this video, I'm going to talk about the retrosynthesis of the melonic ester synthesis. Yeah, uh, we're going to give it. We're going to be given some products, and we need to be able to make them. Okay. Uh, and also, I'm going to cover this acetone versus acetic acid synthon, diethylmalonate versus acetyl acetyl um, ethyl acetyl acetate. And you need to, you need to know the structure of those two molecules. So, what if we're given to make this molecule? On a test you're given, okay, I want you to make this molecule. How do we go about it? Okay. Well, the first thing I like to do is I see an acetone synthon. I'm going to put a circle around it. So I'm going to put a circle right around the acetone synthon. Okay. At the end, at the end of each bond, I'm going to attach an alkahalide at each. Now, there's two different substituents I see here. So therefore... Uh, that tells me that I need to add two different uh, molecules, SN2 targets, using ethyl acetoacetate because ethyl acetoacetate, we said, produce acetone synthon, okay? So now, let's go through the synthesis. If we take ethyl acetoacetate, yeah, the molecule looks like this, and we add base, okay? Non-nucleophilic base. Then we deprotonate on our alpha carbon. Okay, there's our negative charge. Okay, and then look, I see a CH3 group here as, as one of the additions. So I could add methyl iodide. So let's add methyl iodide. Yeah. And if I add methyl iodide, yeah, if I add methyl iodide, then it's simply just add my CH3 group on. So if that is the case, I'm trying to get my focus here. So if that is the case, then I will be coming to a product that looks something like this. Yeah, I have my CH3 that's added on. Now remember, I still have one excess alpha hydrogen. Okay, so if I add base again, I will actually deprotonate it. Okay, so here is my yeah. Here's my methyl group. Now I have a negative charge on the carbon again. So I'll deprotonate that lysis hydrogen and look what is bonded. Okay, well, let's see. I have this whole group here. Remember we said coming towards the end, I'm just going to replace the end of the circle with an alkyl halide. So in that case, I could, I could use this. I could use... replace the end with the an alkyl halide okay so notice that and this prevents me this kind of strategy prevents me from missing carbons and all that stuff so i just literally draw the molecule back and coming towards the end of the circle i replace the end with a just an uh, just an alkyl halide okay and what this does is that it attacks the bromine the carbon containing bromine expel the bromine okay and that's nice to know so we get to a point it looks like this Okay, we have the CH3 group. This now is bonded to a carbon, okay, that has that carbon that has the double bond, okay? Now, what happens in the next step? Next step, hydrolyze. So, remember, once we hydrolyze with acid, okay, this whole group goes to carbon dioxide. This whole um, ethyl acetate group goes to carbon dioxide okay and again now is not the time for mechanism now is the time for just to make these okay so this whole group goes to uh, carbon dioxide and if we redraw the structure there's your double bond yeah there's your methyl group and there's your acetone okay so we get the exact molecule so remember anytime we see acetone synthons we're going to use ethyl acetyl acetate anytime we see acetic acid synthons we use diethylmalonate okay so what if we're given on a test to make this well again look i see uh, uh, uh i see the, the acetone synthon okay and i draw a circle right through it now notice that i have two carbons that's actually coming it's ring close so that means that at each end, I had to have an alkyl halide. So let's count carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five carbons and both end in carbon ones and five, we have some sort of alkyl halide. So we know the molecule to use and we're gonna use ethyl acetoacetate. Okay. Use ethyl acetoacetate, we had it in base. 
decay and we get deprotonation of the alpha carbon of the alpha one of the alpha hydrogens so we get a negative charge there okay once that negative charge has been established now i'm going to simply add let's count two three four five so that's five carbons and five carbon five i'm going to add this bromine here and carbon one i'm going to add this bromine here okay so now look it attacks one and displaces one of the bromine okay so in this case we have this we have a molecule that looks something like this this carbon is bonded to this carbon that has that carbon that carbon that carbon that carbon with a bromine on there okay so now that we have this what is going to end up happening well remember we have an excess of one hydrogen so adding base again will give me that negative charge and adding base again will give me that negative charge and so i have my ketone um yeah so i have a negative charge here i still have this molecule here so yeah and once i create my negative charge this is going to do what react with itself okay so i'm going to come in and attack the bromine and dispel the bromine again let's count our carbon so let's count the bond so we have one two three four five six so we're going to form a six membered ring okay so if you want to run this reaction forward you could definitely see that we're going to come to a structure that looks something like this Yeah, we form a six-membered ring. Okay, form a six-membered ring. Oh, and I'm losing my acetone here. Now, once we hydrolyze with acid, yeah, this whole thing goes to carbon dioxide. We said, yeah, because we create the carboxylic acid. Yeah, we did create carboxylic acid, and we do hydrogen bonding. Flip it, rotate. We get that to go to CO two. So we get that to go to CO two, and we only we're left with the structure that we initially wanted. Okay, so so that's 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 another way of of, of creating uh, these types of molecules. Okay, so now let's look at this one here. And my pen has died, <laughs> so just give me one second. So let's look at this molecule here. Now, what if we wanted to create this one? Let's see. Yeah. What if you're asking a test to make this? Well, there goes my acetic acid synthon now. Yeah, so if I put an arrow around this, uh, a circle around it, I see two things that's bonded to it. So at the end of each, I'm going to add an alkyl halide. Now, when we see acetic acid synthon, what should we be thinking about? Uh, yeah, we should be thinking about the melonic ester synthesis. Yeah, and we know the and we know the, the we we know the melonic ester synthesis. We know diethylmalonate. Yeah, so we're gonna say diethylmalonate. So we take diethylmalonate, right, and we add it in base. Yeah, and that will give us a negative charge on the alpha carbon. Yeah, so there's our negative charge. Now look, I have an ethyl, I have an ethyl group one, two, and an alkyl halide at the end, and a methyl group uh, one and an alkyl halide at the end. So I could add CH three I methyl iodide. Yeah, and what that does is that that gives me the methyl group on one the alpha carbon okay that's nice to know okay now if we add base again because remember we still have an excess of one more alpha hydrogen okay i'll get that negative charge there so there's my methyl group i have a negative charge now yeah so this is how the molecule looks and then now let's see we have one two and an alkyl halide at the end so 
one uh, one two and then we have this alkyl halide at the end so we have this so we add this target it's going to be bonded to the carbon containing alkyl halide and dispel the alkyl halide so in that case we come to a structure that looks like this there's a methyl group this carbon is bonded to a carbon that has that okay and then we have the rest of the molecule and now we simply just hydrolyze yeah so we treat this, so that, treat, this uh, treat this with acid remember this whole thing goes to co2 but remember we still have an excess over here and this we attach an hydrogen and we also get ethanol yeah so if that is true then we get something that looks like this there's your methyl group and there's your acetic acid yeah we just attach a hydrogen and we also ethanol also leaves which is exactly what we wanted so let's talk about making this one how would we make this one and guys use this video as a practice um just kind of walk through it before I actually provide the answers okay so again, I see my acetic acid synthons, so we know this is come from diethyl melanate. Okay, so if we take diethyl melanate, yeah, we should know what the molecule looks like. So diethyl melanate looks something like this, yeah. So if we, yeah, sorry about this. So if we take diethyl melanate, we treat it with base, yeah. We know our alpha hydrogen is smack dead in between the middle. We use one of those, okay? So now that we have one of those, we just treat it with the SN2 target. So in this case, we have the bromine, and at the end, we have the bromide, yeah? So we have this, and at the end, we just replace that bond with a bromine, okay? So once that happens, this attack the SN2 target, and now we're at a structure that looks something like this. This carbon is bonded to this carbon that has the pH group, which are this is a phenyl group. Okay. And then simply we just hydrolyze. So if we treat this with acid, yeah, this whole group goes to CO2. Yeah. And then we just cleave this, we hydrolyze this, and we get the carboxylic acid there plus ethanol. So if I'm rejoining the structure, we have pH, which is the phenyl group, uh, sponsored this carbon that's bonded to this carbon. That's bonded to this carbon. There goes my acetic acid. And there goes the structure that we just created. Okay, let's look at the last one. What if on a test you were given this molecule to make? Yeah, again, I see my acetone synthon. So I know this has come from ethyl acetic acid. Ethyl acetoacetate, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, and we know how ethyl acetoacetate looks. Yeah, so the molecule looks something like this. It's an ester. Yeah, if we treat this with base, it has an alpha hydrogen, two alpha hydrogens there. In this case, we're only going to use one. Okay, so I get a negative charge there. Yeah. And then simply, we just treat it with the SN2 target. Yeah. So if I'm looking at the SN2 target, we have the phenyl, uh, the phenyl group, uh, not phenyl group, the phenyl group, this carbon that's bonded to an alkyl halide. Okay, and again, how do I know? We have this group here, this carbon is bonded to the alkyl halide at the end of the circle, which is what I exactly told you guys to do. Okay, and now if that is the case, now we generate this carbon that's bonded to that carbon that's bonded to the pH group. And we still have this whole, all this group over here. Yeah. If we treat this with acid and hydrolyze, then this whole group goes to CO2. And then we just left with pH, which is this phenyl group that is bonded to this carbon, that is bonded to this carbon, that is bonded to my acetone. Okay. Which is exactly the molecule, which is exactly these molecules are identical uh not this but this these molecules are identical which is exactly what we're asked to form so again you can see that this chemistry now becomes easy 
if we kind of break it down. And that's the idea behind the retrosynthesis of, of these compounds.